Greetings YouTube music people, Martin Smith here. Today we're going to look at the wondrous sound of analogue tape echo. <laughs> got three of the greatest analog tape echo machines right here for us to listen to, assess and work out the differences and idiosyncrasies between them. We've got a WEM copycat, we've got a Maestro Echoplex and last but certainly not least the Roland Chorus Echo 301. Let's go back in time and work out when analog tape echo first occurred. So in the 1950s a guy called Les Paul who had some guitars with his name on you might have heard of him he had a tune out called How High the Moon and on this tune he employed some dazzling echo effects by using two separate tape machines and delaying one of them so that it created an echo after the first one. But it wasn't portable and it couldn't be taken to a gig so it didn't become like a guitarist's toolkit that he could use on gigs until Ray Butts put this into a amp. So in 1953, Ray Butts, music store owner and repairman, he found a way to mount a tape echo unit in the bottom of a valve guitar combo, and thus the Echo Sonic was born. It was the first portable electric guitar echo system, and it was first presented to Chet Atkins, who immediately used it at the Grand Old Opry. News travels fast, and soon Scotty Moore was using this amp too. Now over in the UK, uh, electronics innovator Charlie Watkins, who had WEM amplification, invented the first English tape echo unit, which was called the Copycat. And the Copycat, produced by Watkins Electronic Music, came out in about 58. And one of the first recordings that used the Copycat was Shaking All Over by Johnny Kidd and the Pirates. Now over in the States, there was a guy called Mike Battle, and he was trying to invent a reliable, sturdy tape echo unit. And as a result, in 1959, the Echoplex came out. Now the Echoplex became the standard guitar effects unit for Echo during the 60s and 70s. It was first released under the banner of CMI, Chicago Musical Instruments, uh, not to be confused with the English CMI, which was Clear Tone Musical Instruments that was Jim Marshall's distribution company for Marshall Amplification. So the big innovation with the Echoplex was that you could move the time of the head on a slider. So you had infinite control from minimum to maximum of the delay time. So on the copycat, you'd get three preset time delays, short, medium, and long. Although you could jam the buttons down on two of those and get a cross rhythm, which was kind of funky. Now, finally, the evolution of tape machines led to the Space Echo by Roland. Now, Roland, Japanese company, really, really wants to make a, a super reliable studio orientated echo unit that would have the quality uh, that could be used in the studio, but also portability and integration that a guitarist could use on a gig. And in fact, this was the case, you know, it was used on many stages and in many studios. The innovations that came in with the Space Echo included chorus built in, spring reverb, in the box as well. And then just a variety of delay times. Also of note with the Roland Space Echoes was the feedback system. You could really get a fantastic regeneration sound and then slow that down. It's a perfect dub delay machine. It really has that wonderful uh, capability to go wild. My first experience with tape delay was about 12, 13 years old. I had a Vox Combo. I had my first Jetson guitar and a neighbour was selling a tape echo copycat. Now this was one of the early valve copycats. So we bought the thing, got it home, turned it on, let it get warm, and I couldn't believe the preamp in the thing. So it converted my Vox into like a screaming banshee. Uh, there was extra gain inside the copycat as a virtue of the vacuum tubes and the circuitry. I mean, these were mullard valves, so it was a beautifully made unit, um, but the overdrive sound was incredible. And I got really sold on this. As an addition to my tone, it was almost like I had to have the box before I could play. It really made everything seem fantastic. So that's the benefit of a valve unit, but of course the valve units were noisy, and so as the revisions of circuits went on, the copycat became what's now known as a solid state device. And similarly, the Echoplex began as a valve unit with the first version, and then by the second and third revisions, it became solid state. Obviously the Space Echo was always solid state because people just weren't building small units out of valves at that period. So whilst we're talking about the Copycat, the Echoplex and the Space Echo, there were of course other Echo units that are worthy of mention. There was a Binson Echo Rec, which whilst it didn't have tape playback facility like these do, it did have a drum which was man magnetically operated. So um, it had similarities but also peculiarities to it too. So generally when people went to the music shop to buy a tape Echo unit, they'd want the copycat, the Echoplex, or the Space Echo, they might have ended up with a Milos 
instead. But um, what they'd really wanted was one of these units because these were the desirable ones that players were playing on records and on stages. So we're going to listen to these three, but just wanted to make honourable mention of things like the Binson and the Milas and all those other brands that uh, contributed to the Echo cause. Let's get into the sounds of these things then. So I've got my trusty telly. It's a 78 Fender telly standard. It's got a uh, Jerry Donahue pickup in the bridge p position and then the original pickup in the neck position. It's a nice little balance of pickups, this. It's, um, it's bright, it's got a bit of power, but it's not over the top. And then I've got these fantastic saddles on the guitar. This, in fact, this whole bridge is made by Glendale. So the great thing about this bridge is it's flat milled, so it's beautifully flat to the body, so it has that sort of connection to the guitar itself, um, which means it sustains really good. And then the saddles, now these are in pairs like the vintage ones are, but each pair is staggered to provide the right intonation offset, which is very cool. And then we've got um, different materials for each different set. So for instance, the E and the A string, where you want a bit of twang out of it, I've got stainless steel saddle on those. And then the next two are brass. So for the D, G and B and E strings, they've got brass saddles. And that gives you a slightly warmer sort of, you know, takes off the harsh telly ice pick sound a little bit. So I've got this going through my Groove Tubes rig, which includes a Trio preamp with three channels. This was during the 90s when Aspen Pittman designed this. Um, I don't know, I think he had some help designing it, but basically it's a beautiful sounding preamp, which does a clean blackface Fender, a AC30 stroke JTM45 mean channel, and then the scream channel is kind of like a Banshee Marshall just going crazy. It's a bit thin, that channel three, but it does have great characteristics. And then that preamp goes through the Dual 75 power amp, which at the moment is using the side of the power amp, which has got six L6s in. So it's a fender -y kind of setup. So the sound without any effects. I should also point out that I've got a Dynacomp, an MXR script logo Dynacomp on the floor, which is gonna help out for some of the clean parts. Okay, let's have a listen to the echo then. So the copycat has got three preset times, short, medium and long, and I'm going to go for the short one. So it's basically a single repeat. And this is the sort of guitar sound you'd hear on rockabilly records and old country records. <laughs> Let's move on to setting number two. And finally, we'll move on to the longest setting, which gives you this. So when I first got my copycat when I was 12 or 13 and I heard this long setting. And I used to spend hours playing that. <laughs> that was my party piece. I'm 
going to set the copycat up on echo setting number three and give it a little bit more regeneration and see what it has. <laughs> Right off the bat, you can hear where there are bald spots on the tape, even though it's a fresh tape. And um, it's very decomposed. I mean, it's kind of like deteriorated beyond all semblance. Maybe that adds a lot of charm. So you'd pay a lot of money to get, um, you know, a digital replication that can do that. So I've whacked the gain up, we're now on channel two of the Trio preamp, and we'll hear what this sounds like with a bit more of a grungy sound. plugged into the Echoplex. So if you look on the top panel of the Echoplex, the first switch you'll see is a sound on sound or echo selector. The sound on sound will enable you to keep recording over the same bit of tape. Next along is the sustain button and that will simply just give you more regeneration. And then finally you've got a volume which is a balance between dry signal and effect signal. So I've now got the shortest delay time possible with the slider and uh, we'll see what that sounds like. So it's almost like a reverb meets slapback sort of duration. So now we're moving into that rockabilly territory. I've moved the slider onto a slower delay time. Let's have a listen to that. This is the slowest time setting there is on the Echoplex.
So I've plugged the Les Paul in and we're in the Echoplex with a bit more regeneration now and a slightly dirtier sound on the trio. And it gives us something like this. <laughs> The great thing about the Echoplex is the fidelity of the repeats. It doesn't warble, it doesn't go into blank spots, it just has a really pure sound that diminishes in its bottom and its top end, so you've just got this subtle mid-range that disappears into the distance. Pretty beautiful effect. No wonder it was so popular. All right, we're plugged into the Space Echo now. The posh device. So first off, um, because it was coming into the 80s, it's got other functions such as the chorus, which really bring it into that kind of sound that we were expecting in the 80s. Let's have a listen to the chorus. <laughs> get seasick with that. So I guess Andy Summers had one of these, so it was very much like he used it. Awesome effect. So it's very much built for integration into studio and rigs. Um, your chorus on and off, your echo on and off, and a variety of echo um, speed functions. We've also got spring reverb, but while mine I'm afraid it's broken, I don't know what's gone wrong with it, but um, at some point I'll get that fixed. And uh, it's also got treble and bass controls at the end of the chain there, and a number of outputs. It's also got tons of switching. So if you're on stage and you want to switch the chorus on or off, or various delays on or off, it can accommodate all of that. So it's the, it's the kind of state-of-the-art workhorse echo for a professional musician or a recording studio, and it's still a, a premium piece of kit. You know, people still lust after that unit. So probably like me, you've started to work out that each of these tape echo units lives in its own sonic world. There's no way the copycat would be used to create lush sonic soundscapes. And conversely, there's no way the space echo is going to be your first choice for a, a very gnarly slapback uh, rockabilly sound. Meanwhile, in the middle, the echoplex, it's really not going to make any wild soundscapes and it's also not going to sound cheap, nasty, dark and deteriorated. So that one is your reliable echo right in the middle of the lineage. So I thought, why don't we use the copycat with an appropriate guitar and amp and play some songs that it wants to be used on. And then we'll use the space echo with an appropriate guitar and amp and we'll play some sounds that it wants to make because it's definitely got its own thing. <laughs>
Well, there we go. I really hope you enjoyed that foray into the world of analog tape. I hope you could appreciate the differences between the three units and the way they have their own unique charms. And uh, if you enjoyed this, please press like for me. Please press subscribe. That's always appreciated. Gets the channel out to more people. And uh, I shall see you on another video very soon.